everybody, welcome to the show. I am your host, your expert life strategist, Karina Calhoun. Super excited to have another amazing show today. We've got an amazing guest, someone who is actually near and dear to my heart. Never met her in person, but this is good enough because the this is my people's, y'all. This is my people's. I love her. I absolutely love her. Megs, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm awesome. Super excited to be chatting with you. This is amazing. I have my Megs on the show. Megs, where in the world are you? I hear accent. We hear accent. Where <laughs> are you? Down under. Uh, I'm at, I'm in the Gold Coast uh, in Australia. So uh, it's one of the most beautiful places in the world, but I am very biased. <laughs> <laughs> I am definitely this is now because you're, I don't know, you're like the fourth or fifth person that I have spoken with in Australia. So I'm going to have to make it my mission to get there. You really do. You really do. Tell me about the seafood. How's the seafood there? Oh, the seafood is great, especially on the Gold Coast because we're right near the water. So, you know, um, I love the oysters and the Everything is good about Steve yeah. here because we are literally an island, a big one, but you know, wow. when you're near the water, it's nice and fresh. I love it. I love it. Definitely going to have to get there. Definitely going to have to eat lots of seafood. I love it. So Megs, yes. now tell me your name. I'm calling you Megs, but I want everyone listening to know <laughs> your name. I know Megs is your name, but tell who you are. <laughs> Well, my full name is Megan, but I really only get that if I'm introducing myself professionally or if I'm in trouble. So it's Megs. Gotcha. Gotcha. I understand. So Megan, I love it. But I get to call you Megs. We all get to call you Megs because, I mean, you're just one of those folks who, when you first, when someone first meets you, you're not a stranger. You have this amazing smile, this amazing heart that just comes through, whether it's in written form or a video, it absolutely comes through. And that's what made me absolutely fall in love with your heart. So Megs, welcome to the Go Be Great show. Tell us how you are loving on the world around you. Oh, so many ways. But the biggest, the biggest way is... I have reached a point in my life where I feel free to be who I am. I know who I am and feel free to be who I am in every area of my life. So much so that that is now what I get out of bed in the morning and help other people live into and discover for themselves. I think that for a very long time, I really did feel like I couldn't express myself in a way that felt um, free. Mm. And I've really felt like I was being who everybody wanted me to be and who I felt I should be and wearing all these hats of being a mom and being a business owner and being a wife and being a friend and a daughter and all the things. None of those areas of my life was I actually showing up in, in the, the capacity that I wanted to show up in. So now I'm loving that I get to do that. And I'm loving that I get to do that for other people. And uh, I'm loving being here and being able to, uh, you know, express that with you. So that would be the best answer I could give you. But there's many versions of that. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. So many things that you said in there and a couple of things I want to unpack. Number one, you said you get to wake up and do the things that you love to do, that you want, you are free to do. And waking up in the morning, you know, it, it reminds me of when I was in corporate America, I remember I used to wake up and think, oh my God, I've got to do this today. And it was such a dark, <clears throat> excuse me, a dark feeling. And very um, depressing feeling. I hated it. But then when I went into entrepreneurship, I would wake up in the mornings super excited, literally super excited 
because I get to do what I want to do. Not freedom of nobody has to tell me what to do, but freedom of making the impact that I wanted to make. So when you say you wake up in the morning and you're free to do what you want to do, is that kind of like what you're talking about? Because I kind of feel that from you. A hundred percent. Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. But it does start with a very brave step. And that is you need to be brave enough to let go of the things that aren't you. And then you create the space where you can then rediscover what is you. And it's only after that that you get to Mm -hmm. be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's a journey and it's been a journey and it's a never ending one, Mm -hmm. but I feel like, yes, I only get to do it because, and I have that life because I chose it for myself and I chose me over the things that didn't serve me, if that makes sense. It does. It absolutely does. And, and one other thing you said, Megs, is that, you know, we, and this is really, I feel like a lot of women have subscribe to this, doing all of these things, but not showing up for themselves. Let's talk about that because this, like you said, it's a journey, but how do you, how do you make that journey? How do you even prepare for that journey? What do you do? What do you take along Mm -hmm. with you on that journey? Because when I see that as a journey, I see that it can be a, a cold journey It can be a lonely journey. It can be a journey where you're hungry and thirsty, not necessarily for natural food and drink, but for things that are going to empower you. And so I feel like because you've been on that journey and you know what it's like, you're standing there waiting for other women and you are like that, you know, hey, I've got what you need. So talk to us about that. Yeah, oh, that's a big question. So I think the the first thing that has to happen is the realization. Mm. So for me, it was when I turned 40. I turned 40 and I was shooting all over myself. I felt like I should be happier, I should be wealthier, I should be healthier and I should be more in love and all the things. And so that just can't, and and that just brought up so much for me, just kind of deer in headlights moment of like I should be somewhere way more better than where I'm at. Very bad grammar, but you get where I'm coming from. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so then there's that, there's that first sort of a, a realization, and then in order to step through into that journey, what I needed was someone to take my hand. And I was very, very fortunate to be in a position where I was already working with people at a capacity like I am now, but not in the same space, but more on a business front where we were doing a lot of discovery work and and the, the type of work that we were doing was very deep and intense. And I'm someone who likes to eat my own cooking. So if I'm doing some, if I'm going to be talking about something, if I'm going to say that, that someone should do something, I'm going to be doing it myself. Otherwise, Absolutely. no one's going to listen to anything. Yeah. So I was already in that space. So when I found myself kind of confronted with this realization, I had to eat my own cooking, which I did. And then I was, but I was surrounded by people that I felt held. So I feel like the first thing that needs to happen is you need to find those people. You need to connect with those people that are going to be able to hold you so that you can, because it is, it is not easy work. It's not easy for you to look at the things you don't want to see. So you need to feel like you're in a safe space. You need to feel like you're held in a, in a container, if you will, of where you can then unpack this stuff. And it is an unpacking. So you're going to unpack it. You're going to unpack what's in there. Look at it. We're going to leave some of that behind. And then we're going to repack only the things that serve you now. And then that's what you take on the journey. But that's that first step. It's that realization and then that finding those people that are going to hold you and help you figure out what you're going to leave behind and what you're going to take with you. Now, let me ask you this. This comes to mind because during the self-evaluation process, it can be very daunting. It can be very tedious. It can be very rewarding. 
but mm -hmm. there's a piece in there that I feel like is so very important. What do you say to people when it comes to the self-forgiveness piece? Because I feel like a lot of times when people go through this process that you're talking about, they look back on decisions that they've made and things that they've done and they think, oh my God, I caused some of this trauma to my own life or I made the decision. So talk to us about that self-forgiveness piece because I feel like that's really, really important. It's totally important. And I definitely feel exactly what you're saying because especially if there's other people involved, like children, for instance, or parents or you know someone that is important in your life that you've made a decision that then impacts them or you're about to make a decision that's right for you that's going to impact them it's also really difficult uh the self-forgiveness part it's just being able to look at it for what it is and then be real with yourself about the fact that if you knew what you knew now when you made the decision you would have made a different decision right but you didn't know that then so it's just getting really real about the facts. Sometimes you just got to take out the emotion and be like, well, hang on a minute. Like I didn't know what I know now then. So I made that decision with where I was at then. Now I'm a different person. Now I know more things or I'm being brave and I'm looking at what else is there. And it's then being able to own it. And once you own it, you can go back and you can clean that up with those people, right? You can, what I mean by clean it up is like go and have the conversation, and make sure that that communication is coming from a very real place. Does that make sense? It does. It absolutely does. So let's talk about, tell us the name of your, of your business. Cause I find that extremely interesting and I love it. Yes. So the name is the name of my company and my business is called freed to be you with a D freed to be you, because you could say free to be you, which probably is better you know, grammatically correct, but the D is very important because I believe that it's only on the, the other side of this journey that we are actually free. So we can't really show up till we uncover what we need to uncover, till we really know ourselves well. And once we know ourselves, it, that frees us up and then we are freed to show up as that, as that who we identify with now. Because we change and like definitely I was not the same person I was when I was 20 as when I turned 40, then I'm definitely not the same person at 45 that I was at 40 either because of the work, right? So it's about moving through. Once you move through that and you have this, um, you've begun that journey of self-discovery and you have a better, uh, you have a better relationship with yourself, you are freed to show up like that. So I'm all about not just um, having this nice experience where we uncover ourselves and then we kind of, you know, go like, okay, I know a little bit more about myself. No, this is about alignment. It's about actually freeing yourself up to be you, but then being you. And the being you happens after you're free to do it. So that's where that comes from. I love that. And, and it makes me think of just the excitement of being on the other side of that journey. You know, there's some tough work. There's a long road. There's a deep road. But on the other side of that is just explosions and fireworks and amazingness and awesomeness. Yeah. Talk to us about getting to the other side. What is that like? Of course, we don't want you to give us client specifics or anything like that don't give mm. away the farm but <laughs> getting on the other side of that journey what are your folks experiencing yeah well I can talk from personal experience because I have done it myself obviously but in feedback from uh from from people that I've worked with it's a, it's the same and that is that you now have languaged who you are so we've got that not only uncovered it, but we've given it language and language is very powerful. As I just explained with that word freed, 
language is very powerful. So once you can language who you are in the way, in the shape of, you know, your values and your strengths and a vision, something that you can aim at and something that's meaningful to you that's come from within you, then you have the ability to make decisions and choices that are in alignment with that so that you can move towards it. So it's about that the, what it looks like on the other side is being having so much clarity around what you will accept, what you won't accept. Like setting boundaries is a lot easier because if it's not in alignment, you're going to feel it and you're going to see it a lot clearer. So you get to be a very um, intentional person mm-hmm. about the choices you make and you get to author the life you want, which is part of my vision is being able to set people up and have them be express themselves in in the world in a way that they get to author their own story yeah yeah I love that and you know at at my age and I say my big age we're just Mm -hmm. gonna say 50 something okay (laughs) (laughs) but I'm sure I'll be saying that in a few years I won't be saying 45 I'll be saying 40 something (laughs) And, and, and it's so amazing because once you get that true deep revelation of these are my boundaries, but one key thing you said is your values. When you can really truly understand what your values are and align those with boundaries, you know, a lot of times people think boundaries are designed to keep people out but it's really to keep you safe. And when you have those values that truly align with, or boundaries that align with your values, it is an amazing thing, you know? And I'll just give myself, for example, one of my values is authenticity. I value that highly. And if I can't be authentic with you in a conversation, just a, a, basic conversation. I don't want to be in that conversation with you. Really? That is so important to me at this big age of 50 something. And I feel like this is what you are offering people to really know what it is they want out of life and experience that. So how do people get in touch with you? Number one. And then number two, what does it look like when they initially get in touch with you? Is there uh, an intake form, some type of consultation? What happens? Yeah. Can I say one more thing based on what you just said there about values before I answer that? I see it as like it's your, it becomes your compass. Mm-hmm. A little funny story and a side note. I was not born with an internal compass. If someone asks me where North is, I'm pulling it up. That's someone asked me where West is, I'm born and left. <laughs> this is why I love this analogy, right? Because it's like that in life. If you don't have a compass, you're just going to be picking all these things and trying this and throwing mud at the wall and really not knowing what you're doing. If you have a compass and it is your personal compass with your true north, which is heading straight to what's meaningful to you, you have the ability to actually navigate Mm -hmm. those boundaries Mm -hmm. and navigate your decisions. And so I love that kind of as a, you know, just as a little sort of bow on what you just said there, because yeah, it is like we we throw out the word values and we throw out the word boundary and the intention. And it's like all these things we've all heard before, but if we were to bring it all into like something that makes sense, that's how I would make sense of it. It's Mm -hmm. like, it becomes your personal compass. Mm -hmm. And I teach you, how to use that compass moving forward. So when chaos ensues, you know how to use that tool because it's, again, I could put a compass in my hand. I'll, unless you showed me how to use it, I wouldn't know. And we know but, that chaos is always going to come. How, I don't always going to come. Prepare. Chaos totally. is going to come. <laughs> <laughs> chaos is going to come and the journey never ends. Right. My personal growth journey will end when they put me in the, in the ground and put the dirt yep. on the top. That's it. I'm done. I'm not done until then. It's a journey. So you need to have these tools and you need to have these things in place. So yeah, I feel like that's a really good way just to kind of tie that together. But for someone to get in touch with me uh, right now as it stands, 
uh, I am taking um, personal uh, d- discovery calls. So the best way for you to re- for me to really help you is to understand what it is that you, where you actually feel stuck, where you don't feel free. And then for us to come up with a solution and a plan so that we can un- get you unstuck and we can free you up in that area of your life. Now, filter into every other area as well, but that's where I feel is the best place to start. And also we need to see if I'm your person, right? Because it's not always, we're not always going to be a fit. And this is deep work. Mm -hmm. So we need to create a safe space from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So that would be one way that we could determine whether I was the person to help you go on this journey, whether I'm the person to get in the passenger seat with you. Because you're going to get out of the passenger seat and get back in the driver's seat and then I'm going to get to navigate, <laughs> right? But you might not want me to do that. So that's the best way to do it. And you can definitely, um, I can give you a link to kind of book that call and we can have a chat. The other way is you could uh, come and be part of my uh, community. So if you're not quite ready to dive in or you just want to put your toe in the water, then you can come and hang out with me and some of the other people who have been through the work and you can kind of get a feel for what it's like and then decide how far you want to go with it at the moment. I love it. I absolutely love it. Megs, any last words of wisdom for those that are listening? Oh, you know what I always say? You've been on my show. This is an address rehearsal. Mm-hmm. This is the act, the only, the final act. So you ha- it's time to be you and it's time to not just be who you think you should be, but to actually be who you are. And I know that can be scary and I know that can be, you know, easy to say, but it's time. The world needs you. Whew. If you, those that are listening, if you did not hear the clarion call, clean your ears because that was a clarion call. I love it. Mix, thank you so very much for being on the show today. Folks, this has been another amazing episode of Go Be Great, and I will see you all on the flip side.